Hello everyone, welcome back and uh, uh, this is the third lecture related to diabetes and in this lecture we are going to talk about the complication of diabetes. So to start with, diabetes complications can be divided into two main categories. One is called as acute complications okay, and uh, the other one is long-term or chronic complications okay so um, acute complication basically occurs you know um, due to if for example uh, there is too much increased or decreased uh, level of glucose uh, for a short period of time um, whereas you can say the chronic complications occur like someone who have a high blood sugar levels uh, over a long period of time so you know they can they create a uh, few things or they damage few what you can say uh, structures in the body um, and uh, <clears throat> due to like increased glucose level uh, over a long period of time what happens is um, there are two types of complications one is called as microvascular complications and one is called as macrovascular complications so, um, um, to start with, in acute complications, remember three things which are important. One is called as diabetic uh, ketoacidosis, okay? And this one occurs mostly in type 1 diabetes mellitus. Uh, whereas uh, the other one is hyperosmolar hyperglycemic state uh, this one occur in mostly in type 2 diabetes mellitus so this one is also called as DKA and this one is also called as HHS uh, one more type of complication is there um, <clears throat> which is called as hypoglycemia and like of course as, as, as it we know like when I was talking about the treatment, when I was talking about the insulin, this one can occur in anyone uh, taking insulin. Plus, it, it can occur in anyone who is uh, on like uh, drugs which are secreting insulin in the body, or it can occur in anyone. There are multiple reasons. For example, someone who is taking uh, insulin and he will skip some meal or he will get some infection, um, things like this. Uh, chronic complications can be divided into two main categories one is called as macrovascular and uh, vascular and one is called as microvascular and the other ones you can say which can be categorized simply under the heading of uh, miscellaneous or you can say other complications okay uh, now, uh, for example, like, you know, all the organs which have, like, micro vessels, for example, the retina, the kidneys, okay, so it can affect those organs and this, the nerves which are supplied by very small uh, size of vessels or arterioles, so they can lead to microvascular complication. For example, I, I will write down here. It is going to like retina, kidney, and uh, no, nerves, peripheral nerves. Okay, uh, macrovascular, of course, like uh, is such kind of uh, complications in which like the major vessels or the organs which are supplied by big vessels, you know, they are affected. For example, it can lead to coronary artery diseases cerebrovascular accidents like stroke or uh, peripheral artery diseases okay we will, we will discuss them in uh, more detail now so uh, I will start with acute complications okay and uh, <coughs> in that one see like these are two things two tables which are given see in this one there is decreased amount of insulin so of course like this one is talking about hyperosmolar 
hyperglycemic state and this one there is lack of insulin which means it is diabetic ketoacidosis so what happens like whenever there is lack of insulin you can see that you know there will be breakdown of fat in the cells there will be breakdown of glycogen to glucose like simply all the functions which insulin is perform like opposite is happening there is decreased use of glucose and protein breakdown will be there so we will take each thing see when the fatty breakdown fats will occur there will be free fatty acids there will be formation of ketone bodies and ketones will start appearing in the urine and in the blood and ketones will cause acidosis on the other hand see uh, when there will be more glucose in the body it will be there will be hyperglycemia the body will start throwing the kidneys will start throwing the glucose outside osmotic diuresis and when the kidneys will keep on throwing glucose out from the body in the form of urine so it have to throw water also which will lead to dehydration when there will be dehydration there will be uh, like less water in the blood so simply the concentration of the blood will become it will become more concentrated the osmolality of the blood will increase so as hop hypo hyper osmolality and hemoconstruction of the blood which again will lead to acidosis it will also create a lot of electrolyte imbalance same thing here protein breakdown there will be formation of new glucose the blood urea nitrogen will be increased as well as there will be hyperglycemia so uh, like this is what happens in you can say diabetic ketoacidosis okay uh, so diabetic keto ketoacidosis uh, there are slides definitions okay um, epidemiology and pathophysiology and like all these things the same thing which i talk about clinical features are written over here but you can see over here there will be lack of insulin gi upset any illness you know onset slow four to eight hours and the person because there will be acetone in the urine and acetone in the blood so when you will smell their breath you know their breath will smell like acetone okay like ketone body so juicy fruit gum type of smell will come they will be having acidosis hyperkalemia high blood sugar and they need hydration insulin electrolyte replacement so simply uh, this type of uh, complication occur in uh, type 1 diabetes mellitus because of deficiency of insulin and uh, of course there will be release of more and more counter regulatory hormones like glucagon cortisol catecholamines and growth hormone okay and um, like uh, most of the time you know these are the people who are having type 1 diabetes mellitus and now they have some sort of stress like surgery is a stressful condition infection is a stressful condition so they, they got some sort of illness and then they, they present with DKA or diabetic ketoacidosis so uh, simply what's going on as we know like the uh, liver will keep on producing glucose and there will be hyperglycemia the urine the kidney will keep on throwing the glucose out from the body there will be dehydration there will be electrolyte disturbance and uh, the sodium will be decreased remember like the small like when the uh, urine like the body will lose a lot of water so what will happen those what sodium will be decreased why because the water shift to um, extracellular fluid okay and uh, when what you can say when the water will shift to extracellular fluid because of this dehydration there will be pseudo hyponatremia so the sodium level will be decreased and that's why it is called a pseudo hyponatremia uh, because uh, uh, what hap what is going on in this case is Okay.
Okay, so there will be pseudo hyponatremia. Why? Because uh, uh, what's going on is like body is losing a lot of water. Okay, so when the body is losing a lot of water, so what will happen? The sodium uh, will be lost as well. And when the water from the cells will move to extracellular fluid like to understand this thing completely of course you must have some concept about the water compartments of the body so what will happen basically there will be dilution effect like it will be diluted and the sodium will be decreased okay and that's why it is called as pseudo hyponatremia okay Okay, so and uh, fats breakdown will occur, keto, uh, ketone bodies will be released and there will be metabolic acidosis and uh, simply like these are the people who are basically having what things? Uh, acetone breath, uh, breath like uh, what you can say, um, the exact word for that is fruity, fruity type of smell. So see, they have acetone breath. Because, why? Because there is ketone bodies in the blood. Okay, ketonemia. There will be appearance of ketone bodies in urine, which we can check. Okay. There will be metabolic acidosis. pH will be decreased. Okay. As well as, if you will check their urine, there will be glycosuria. which means like uh, in the urine there will be more and more glucose glycosuria so all this thing will occur okay uh, now uh, one of the very important thing what happens is uh, uh, of course like body will lose a lot of potassium okay uh, but uh, the serum potassium will you will found maybe it will be elevated or it will be normal why uh, because if you don't know but one action of insulin is what like it uh, um, insulin basically shift the extracellular flu uh, fluid potassium inside the cell uh, that's the reason you know whenever someone have hyperkalemia and uh, he come in emergency one of the thing which we do is we give them insulin so what insulin do it shift the ecf uh, potassium in, into the cells so now uh, what's going on there is no insulin so simply the the potassium which is in the ecf will not shift inside the cell so that's why um, what we will found the overall picture will be what like either the potassium uh, will be normal or or it will be elevated okay and uh, now this is very important point guys why because why it is important point because once we will start treating this condition what we have to give them we give the patients insulin and when we give the patients insulin what insulin do it decrease the glucose level but also it increase the shift of potassium from ECF to uh, ICF intracellular fluid okay uh, so uh, this thing is uh, <laughs> important to understand here so simply these are the patients you know they, they have the same symptoms like polyuria polydipsia polyphagia uh, but uh, you know what happened and now uh, see they have dehydration also okay and uh, when they have dehydration uh, what what occurs is uh, um, they get hypotensive like one thing is called as a orthostatic hypotension like when the person will stand up from the laying down position so their blood pressure drops so they have the same thing of course like uh, the precipitating factor for this DKA is some sort of trauma or stress like infection or surgery or omission of medication for example they are not taking insulin so they will be fatigued or malaise uh, they will be having they'll be having weight loss because they lose a lot of water 
polyuria, polydipsia, nausea, vomiting, abdominal distension can be there. When you will examine them, you will find that they are confused, they have hypotension. Uh, guys, hyperkalemia can lead to arrhythmias, a very important point. Maybe you will find them in severe dehydration, their breath smells like uh, acetone. And when you will check their urine, you will find glycosuria and ketonuria. And basically, why it is this thing is written over here because you know, uh, it's like in the GP clinic, we have like urine dipstick. So basically, this is an office test. Like urine dipstick, uh, you can perform in the office. Okay. So on that one, you can find like they have ketonuria as well as glycosuria. So <laughs> this is the presentation of these patients and uh, 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 this is the role of insulin again like it increases the glucose uptake in the muscles, liver start forming uh, what you can say glycogen and increase glucose uptake in the fat cells which will cause lipogenesis okay. Um, so in investigations what we have to do in these patients of course uh, we do a number of investigations. Of course, we have to check the blood glucose level. Okay, blood sugar levels. It should, it should come here. It should come on the first thing. Should be blood glucose levels. Okay, so we check the blood glucose levels. Of course, we do check the. Uh, okay, the blood sugar levels sometimes can be very, very, very high, like from eleven to fifty-five millimole per liter. Okay, sometimes it comes back very, very, very high. Uh, so we can do electrolytes. What you will found in the electrolytes? Um, sodium will be decreased. Okay. Sodium will be less. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> of course, you do hyperglycemia. I already told you why. And uh, potassium may like maybe it's like potassium, maybe normal or maybe raised. Okay, so like this way, uh, we, we will found this thing. Uh, of course, like we do the blood urea nitrogen, they will be raised as well. So we will check the urea, blood urea levels. Okay. Uh, in the urine you will found that there will be like ketones, there will be glucose and sorry. Uh, one of the thing because you know uh, one investigation which is uh, I don't know like written over here let me see no it's not written here. Uh, one of the investigation which is very important ECG is written because you know whenever the potassium level is, are not good so we always take care of the heart, it can lead to arrhythmias. So whenever, remember there is any acid-base balance, by our knowledge we know there is acid-base balance. We always go for ABGs, atrial blood gases. In this one, of course, you will get a picture of metabolic acidosis, okay. Uh, uh, and of course, like these patients can present with severe vomiting and dehydration. So, sometimes, uh, like if the vomiting and dehydration is too severe, then maybe metabolic alkalosis, but metabolic acidosis, you have to remember. So, what is the treatment? Okay. Uh, treatment is simply, guys, uh, I'm going to uh, remove this all, of course, like just tell you a short way of treatment, how to remember, uh, very short way of treatment. Mm -hmm. Um, see, of course, like because they come in emergencies, okay, so in emergencies, and sometimes they're confused, sometimes they're in coma, so ABC, we will follow the same thing, every breathing circulation, and uh, uh, we will take uh, investigations as soon as possible. Uh, we will may start making the di uh, diagnosis. So they are dehydrated. So of course, fluid resusc resuscitation. So uh, of course, normal saline or saline is the best fluid. Okay. So we give one liter stat or you can say one liter per hour okay uh, so we continue this thing okay depending on what's the condition of the patient so this one uh, is important so start with normal line 
and uh, once what you can say uh, you you believe like the dehydration is gone or the patient is eu volemic eu volemic is a medical term to talk about like the patient hydration level is good then uh, what you can say change the thing to from normal saline to half normal saline of what we call it as 0.45% normal saline i already had lecture on in general surgery about the fluid and le electrolyte balance okay so uh, now uh, the important thing is what uh, what we have to give them once is one thing is dehydration we are giving the second thing they don't have insulin so we start them with insulin okay and of course like insulin is, should be given to them and uh, which kind of insulin is used for them is regular insulin okay like that is emergency and we must give them regular insulin and uh, we give them like infusion no need to remember the doses guys but like 0.1 unit per kilogram per hour is what is given uh, basically okay so what we do by the we keep on checking their potassium levels that's very important because potassium remember like whenever there is any abnormality with potassium levels it directly affect the heart it can lead to arrhythmias so that's why it is important so uh, once you know like uh, uh, if the, when the blood sugar levels are coming towards normal uh, guidelines says like uh, uh, you don't have to bring the blood glucose level directly into the ideal limits but you have to maintain it between somewhere between 12 12 to 14 millimole per liter okay so once like the blood sugar levels come back between 12 to 14 millimole, millimole of liter what we do we basically change the fluid to uh, dextrose 5 water Okay, so insulin therapy is given, uh, hydration therapy is given, and uh, once, like for example, if the when we give insulin, so the potassium it shift inside the cell, so uh, sometimes uh, we have to give them uh, put, uh, potassium uh, replacement. Uh, that's a very important thing. Okay, uh, especially you know when the when the potassium level is uh, you can say less than three point three millimole per liter okay so so we start them with potassium replacement of course so uh, potassium uh, comes in an injection for like in small vials and you know uh, one vial is like around 20 to 40 milli equivalent per liter so what we do we put them them in the in the same uh, infusion which is already running okay uh, the normal the you must remember what is the normal value of potassium what is the normal value of sodium for example the normal value of potassium is from 3.5 to 5 millimole per liter so that like that's that's the important thing uh, very few times not always guys just few times for example when the metabolic acidosis is very severe then you can give them bicarbonate not in all the cases bicarbonate okay especially when the pH uh, is less than 7.0 or you can say when the acidosis is so severe uh, okay or like in com com comatose patients you know we can give them this bicarbonate ions as well okay so this thing yeah, the mortality of this condition is uh, high even in developed countries you know up to five percent of the people they die okay so because like they have some sort of infection also and their condition is like not so good so that that's why uh, what you can say this is a quite a serious condition so that's it and uh, the other thing is like a hyper or smaller uh, state okay in which there is decreased amount of insulin uh, so what happens is see like little breakdown of fat fat in cell why because there is less amount of insulin is always there breakdown of glucose gone to glucose like same thing here which should lead to hyperglycemia same story okay extracellular dehydration renal insufficiency hypokalemia will be there uh, I, I, okay the good the good the difference between this one and that one is what like see when a small amount of insulin is there so there will be less formation of ketones okay rest almost everything is same but the ketones will be formed less so what happens in this one again the same thing you know guys uh, these are the patients who already have type 2 diabetes mellitus but uh, um, this time you can say they have some sort of stress like infection uh, surgery sometimes for example even stroke okay or myocardial infarction they can they may have uh, so uh, in that response you know they have this thing so uh, just remember this thing there is a little amount of glucose so, uh, sorry insulin 
so that's the reason uh, you can say like there is less formation or, or no formation of ketone bodies okay uh, fat cells you know they 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 either they don't break down or they, the breakdown is so so minimal that there is no formation of ketone bodies and it, even like if there is the formation of ketone bodies like the liver is able to 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 uh, process them okay so uh, simply uh, <laughs> this thing uh, so the ketosis or the ketone bodies are not there so this one this condition is characterized by hyperglycemia hyperosmolarity and dehydration without ketosis okay so uh, you can say uh, this condition uh, sorry I will, I will open uh, one photograph okay I think I, I did not put that photograph in this one um, let me check let me check let me check okay okay yes uh, in this one like I, I did not put that in that one but simply uh, how how we can see uh, this condition is like uh, this condition uh, can be remembered by uh, in that one there is ketosis like the ketone bodies are present but this one have what uh, hyperglycemia okay plus uh, hyper osmolality plus uh, what they don't have is okay yes of course they do have dehydration uh, but no ketosis the ketone body uh, bodies are not present so it means like their, their breath will not smell like acetone simply okay but the thing is in this one the dehydration is more severe than DKA, they, they need a lot of fluid, okay, as compared to DKA. Uh, okay, so th this thing is important. And, you know, like this condition is more common in like type 2 diabetes mellitus and more common in, in adult patients. And many of the adults, you know, they already have a lot of heart conditions or heart failure, things like this. So, you know, we are must be very careful because when we have to give them fluids, uh, we, we give them a lot of fluids, okay. Uh, so that's the reason like you know they, they can go into any any other thing simply uh, their heart failure can be um, exaggerated exacerbated simply uh, so that, that's that's the point so this one also have an insidious onset they have the same symptoms like polyuria polydipsia and they feel weak okay and uh, you will found that you know uh, like most of these pe people they will be severely dehydrated they are elder people so maybe you will found them completely lethargic or confused or maybe in coma because you know the serum osmolality is so high the blood is so much concentrated that uh, you know you can found these patients in this, this condition so investigations will somehow remain same uh, blood glucose sugar levels should again come on uh, on the top of course okay uh, this one should come on the top and uh, blood sugar level in these patients guys can be high like even up to um, 130 millimole millimole per liter so it, this, this condition can be so severe uh, so uh, rest all the stories are same there is, there is no difference at all okay uh, but when you will check the ketone bodies of course you will not find anything in this one okay in these patients so uh, this thing is important and uh, uh, when you will check the urine of course you will find the glucose in this one you will check the electrolytes urea creatinine sepsis workup just to find out what is the cause of that thing Plasma osmolarity very important, plasma pH very important, uh, ECD chest x ray and D diameter test just to check, like, what is the thing which basically started this condition. So, uh, this thing, and now uh, the treatment is very similar to DKA, okay. And what we have to do is to we have to rehydrate them, and again, same thing, normal saline is the best one. You will start with ABC, okay. Uh, 
you will of course like in emergency you will start with ABC you will see either the patient uh, have any loss of consciousness uh, you will start with one liter of normal saline per hour okay and keep on checking the electrolyte levels what is the condition of sodium and potassium okay and when the sodium levels are at the good range okay uh, then you have to move again to half normal saline or what what what, what I'm saying like 0.45 percent normal saline okay so once like the sodium levels are coming back in normal so uh, move to or shift to uh, half normal saline okay or 0.5 percent normal saline simply uh, so uh, this thing uh, and once you know like uh, the blood glucose level is coming back towards normal like between 12 to 14 a millimole per liter so uh, move to dextrose 5 water okay like dextrose 5 water is simply the water which have glucose in that uh, rest everything is same guys there is no no nothing no difference if like potassium level is going down replace the potassium same guidelines okay uh, search the factor which is which is the precipitating factor treat that insulin we give in the same way okay uh, it is written over here overly soluble insulin four to six units after start 10 units iv the best way to remember this thing is again i'm telling you though there is no need to remember the units because no one asks like at this stage so uh, it is like 0.1 units per kilogram per hour of infusion you know and they keep on checking hourly glucose levels Okay, just to check like either they have to increase or decrease uh, what you can say uh, the glucose the, the insulin requirement okay the bad thing is this one what you can see here the mortality is up to 50 to 90 percent the only reason is guys because these are old people they have many underlying problems so that's why many of them they die because of this thing uh, that's the important thing uh, the third, third condition or the third uh, acute condition is called as hypoglycemia and uh, hypoglycemia is guys so 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 easy uh, like <laughs> what is hypoglycemia uh, wait let me open okay so as the name shows what is hypoglycemia when the glucose level in the blood will be down Okay, we call this condition as hypoglycemia. So, uh, like, uh, don't remember this value. I will give you a new value. Basically, hyper hypoglycemia is defined as, as when the blood glucose level is less than 4 millimole per liter. Okay, remember this thing. Which um, is 72 milligram per deciliter. Okay, so there are many causes of hypoglycemia. For example, uh, it is very common, of course, in diabetes mellitus who are taking insulin or especially, you remember, sulfonylureas, okay, or any other drug which is basically increasing the release of insulin. Uh, refer to the previous lecture. So uh, many people, for example, you know, who don't have diabetes mellitus, then, of course, we have to search the cause. For example, maybe it's a glu glucagonoma. Like there is a tumor, uh, uh, what you can say, which is releasing um, too much insulin. Okay, so uh, or you can say there can be a tumor which is, uh, for example, releasing epinephrine. Okay, and most of these people, by the way. Uh, which you will found is uh, the people who are in the insulin and you will found like they they skip the meal especially okay uh, after taking what you can say insulin so causes of hypoglycemia of course uh, it's a it's a it's a big 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 discussion by the way uh, because there are causes of hypoglycemia when in the blood you will found that there is hyper insulinism or the insulin level in the blood is very high for example someone taking insulin or drugs like sulfonyl ureas okay uh, on the or someone who have for example insulinoma a tumor of the insulin but there are causes of hypoglycemia in which like maybe you will not find like the insulin level in the blood is increased for example 
someone whose liver is not functioning well so see liver is the one which release glucose in time of need if someone have hepatic failure they cannot they cannot release glucose instantly so they they may have hypoglycemia in absence of hyperinsulinism um, renal failure behave in the same way the people who are alcoholic they can behave behave in the same way um, sometimes you know it can occur due to other causes like uh, some people you know after after eating taking their meals they they have hypoglycemia it is called as postprandial hypoglycemia so uh, you have to remember one thing called as whipple's triad okay uh, what is whipple's triad is this one of course there are three things okay triad is made up of what you can say serum glucose level basically less than uh, 2.2 this is the value by the way millimole per liter uh, by the way like for vapors right okay uh, hypoglycemia is considered what i already told you when the blood glucose level will go down uh, so uh, uh, basically blood low blood glucose level less than 2.2 in f uh, females okay in males it is 2.5 but i'm taking just the lower value and the other thing is you know um uh, they have hypoglycemic symptoms and most of the hypoglycemic symptoms are which one? Uh, you know, they feel shaky, they feel sweaty. Why they feel sweaty is because uh, uh, the autonomic nervous system, you know, it, it quickly activate and it releases a lot of flight and fight hormones like epinephrine which give you palpitations, we give you sweating, we give, give you clamors. Or you become shaky which give you tachycardia okay and like the person you know they, they you when you will see them it will seem like you know they are in anxiety okay so most of the hypoglycemic symptoms are basically neurological symptoms okay uh, I, I would say they, they are neurological symptoms because see tremors or in, in anxiety or sweaty or all those things you know uh, they are and uh, what happened by the way after that you know they feel dizzy and uh, they had headaches sometimes you know they have problem with the visions um, they 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 when you will talk to them they will be confused and of course they can go into coma so one is hypoglycemic symptoms second like a proven low blood sugar level and the third thing when you will give them glucose their symptoms are reversed Okay, so this is the this this is called as the Whipple's triad. So uh, uh, these are the you can say the Whipple triad, and by this way, uh, you can simply remember the clinical features. See, adrenergic symptoms, palpitations are there, tremors are there, sweating is there, anxiety is there. Okay, tachycardia is there. Adrenergic means which are released. Uh, which are due to epinephrine dizziness headache coma seizures confusion yes i don't think so i have to add anything of course they feel weak or fatigue they feel fatigued okay so uh these are the things one interesting thing of course investigation which we have to do is blood sugar levels and insulin assays and um this is a very interesting test called a c peptide what a c peptide is it is a short peptide which is released into, into the circulation when pro-insulin is cleaved into insulin. Now, why this thing is interesting, for example, like I will tell you. Um, um, you know, there are things like this, for example, someone, uh, okay. I will tell you very good medical medical users. I was taking you towards some more legal type of thing. Um, <coughs> if someone have hypoglycemia and we have to differentiate like either this hypoglycemia is due to a tumor from inside which is releasing a lot of insulin or someone is taking exogenous, exo exogenous like insulin in an injection form, we are going to do this test. If we will found that the C peptides are present in the circulation, it means the insulin is coming from inside because when the insulin is released from inside, 
it is released in the form of coinsulin and then it is cleaved into insulin understand so anyone in which the hypoglycemia occur due to the insulin from inside the body formed by the pancreas the c peptide will be raised but anyone who is taking insulin in the form of injections the c peptide level will be either normal or either decreased okay so these are all the tests which we will do okay we will do the blood glucose level insulin assay c peptide levels renal and liver function tests because i told you when your liver or kidneys are not functioning properly the people may have hypoglycemia like of course this is the full workup which 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 we have to do guys treatment is so easy treatment is so 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 easy simply if you are not in hospital setup give them some sugar or glucose some energy drink cola can work okay but if you are in a hospital setup then of course you can give them iv glucose and uh, like dextrose five water is what is used mostly in the hospitals but what we have in the hospital is dextrose 50 water as well okay so what they do is by the way they give them um, dextrose 50 like the amount of glucose in this fluid is too much high 50 percent okay we give them 50 ml by iv of course like to instantly increase their glucose level other treatment is what you can also give them glucagon injection glucagon have the same effect opposite to uh, insulin so glucagon is going to increase their uh, insulin level in the blood okay so uh, this thing uh, we uh, our aim is to of course keep the blood glucose level greater than five of course okay uh, and when conscious and alert encouraged to eat and then of course run all the other investigation to found like what is the cause okay uh, in this thing so uh, we always uh, educate the patients you know who are taking insulin it's very important we always educate them that you know uh, when you are taking insulin uh, there is something called as uh, I will tell you here there is something called as hypopac uh, you can google this uh, no need of google by the way it's a, it's, a, it's a small pack in which there is an injection of uh, glucagon with some um, you can say sweet or sugar candies okay so first of all we educate them you know the all the people who are taking insulin that, you know what is hypopac when like how to identify that you are going into hypoglycemia first of course we, we we educate them you know how to take care of yourself that's very important but uh, uh, when we tell them that you know if you feel shaky if you feel sweaty if you feel palpitations if you feel confused then what you have to do oh take hypopac take out those sugar candies dissolve it in water if there is no water okay directly take them if there is water dissolve in water drink that wait for 5 to 15 minutes if you are able then check your blood glucose level if you cannot check your blood glucose level then wait if the symptoms are not getting better then take candies okay or take the injection of glucagon directly okay because glucagon injection is going to increase the blood glucose level instantly okay and uh, if the candies will work uh, then of course check your blood glucose level it should be more than five millimol per liter okay and don't miss your meals take the next meal this is how we well, how we uh, you can say educate them so one okay like you know diabetes have is very 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 interesting and very 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 you can say lengthy uh, we have to talk a lot about what you can say uh, as i told you like i can talk about this diabetes anyone can talk about this diabetes for so 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 long time because of course like it have a lot of complications okay now we will go on to chronic complications and i hope like next lecture will be the last lecture for the diabetes okay especially 
Okay. Okay. Um, Chronic complications, as I told you, uh, divided into two main categories. One is macrovascular and one is um, microvascular. Uh, of course, we will discuss macrovascular complication. Complications. Okay, first. So, macrovascular com complications, why they occur, guys? They simply occur due to, um, like, the diabetes mellitus simply... It affect the uh, major vessels of the body. Okay, uh, it increased the atherosclerosis uh, process in the body. Diabetes. So people they they can get coronary artery diseases. Am I? So anyone who have diabetes mellitus, you know, the risk of myocardial infarction is three to five times higher, okay, than the general population or the population who don't have diabetes, okay. And it is one of the leading cause of death, you know, in the people, who, especially who have type 2 diabetes mellitus. And that's why it's important and we keep on asking them that, you know, always follow up with the, especially the cardiologist, okay, just to check like your risk and... Uh, what they do is, by the way, they have some charts for who, like they they assess your risk, risk like depending like if there is any diseases in your family, either you're a smoker, what's your age, how much is your lipid level, and either do you, do you have diabetes or not, and either you're a male or female. So it's a you can see that risk assessment chart uh, on on Google, okay, it's uh, available. GPs have that. Um, ischemic stroke. Okay, so again, 2.5 times higher risk. 2.5 times, times higher risk, guys, than the general population of ischemic stroke and with anyone who have diabetes. And uh, <clears throat> again, we keep on educating them how, how, to, how to deal with this thing. HbA1c level, we keep on checking them just like to see either yeah, it is causing anything or not. And the last thing is, you know, I told you is peripheral vascular arterial diseases, peripheral arterial uh, diseases. Okay. Uh, now, uh, what is this one? Of course, like uh, the peripheral arteries, you know, uh, they, they get affected. And uh, what happens is uh, um, there's something called as claudication. Uh, in surgery, you would know like the, there is, you can say there is blockage, atherosclerosis in the peripheral arteries. And the blood supply to your limbs is not as good as in the normal people. And these are the people who, when they have low blood supply in the lower limbs, especially, whenever they try to walk, you know, they feel pain. And due to that, you know, uh, they develop like less blood supply in the feet, toes especially, you know, um, they can get ulcers, okay, ulcers in toes, uh, which can lead to uh, wait, oh, it's not doing this in, okay, which can lead to gangrene simply, guys, okay. Gangrene is a very bad complication of diabetes mellitus and simply like uh, anyone who have diabetes, you know, they have 30 times more chances of getting gangrene and whenever anyone have gangrene, so what they do, they do amputation. They basically cut that part, okay. So that's why you'll found like many patients who have diabetes for a long period of time, you'll found like they, they had done amputations, like their limbs is removed, okay, or their, their toes are removed. That's just because of gangrene. So how we can how we can avoid this complication is simply by maintaining a very tight glycemic control, uh, maintaining good blood pressure less than one thirty eighty. I already told you, and uh, maintaining their cholesterol level. Again, in the start, I talk about that. Uh, smoking cessation is the best thing we can do for them. Microvascular complications. Think about the structures which have microvessels. Okay, 
microvascular complications. And that's the reason, by the way, before going on microvascular complications, anyone who have ulcers in the toes or, or not even ulcers in the toes, like all the, all the diabetic patients, we send them for foot care or podiatrist who keep on checking their feet and educate them what kind of shoes they must wear, how to take care of their feet, if there is any injury they found, you know, uh, what to do with that and what what is the, by the way, there is something called as monofilament test. What they do, like they, they keep on uh, checking, like it's a small type of filament, they, they touch the uh, feet uh, and they see like if you can feel that or not, okay, just to see like either you have uh, sensations in that or not. Uh, that, that will be discussed in like peripheral neuropathy, you know. So uh, one of the thing like it it damages the small vessels in the retina and it can lead to diabetic uh, retinopathy. Okay. So diabetic retinopathy is uh, a very important thing, guys. It have three stages like non proliferative, pre proliferative, as well as proliferative. So I can I can show you here this thing this is the retina and you can see there is cotton wool spots as well as hard exudates like normally they are not present normally the retina retina is clear so this is a diabetic patients for like in which like there is diabetes for a long period of time and their retina they started showing some changes after having diabetes for a long period of time okay the first stage is non proliferative then there is pre proliferative as well as pro proliferative stage so ultimately of course like uh, that's one of the reason we we send them in ophthalmologist care as well who keep on uh, seeing their uh, what you can say retina okay and guys you know in developed countries this diabetic retinopathy is the leading cause of blindness because they have long their their, their uh, life expectancy is very long and because when they had diabetes for over many years, you know, they, they may have this retinopathy. So again, controlling way is same, you know, good glycemic control, good lipid control, treat hypertension, stop smoking, annual reviews with ophthalmologist. Okay, they, they keep on seeing their, their eye, eyes and retina and they, they decide like either thing is good or not. Uh, then there is diabetic uh, nephropathy okay of course like you will see many patients who have diabetes for a long period of time you will found like that their, that their kidneys are like uh, replaced okay because they, they go into renal failure and again it's a very common cause of renal failure in developed countries especially okay and around uh, 40% of patients who have type 1 diabetes mellitus or 20% of patients who have type 2 diabetes mellitus will go into renal failure. So most common, more common in type 1 diabetes mellitus patients. It takes around 5 to 10 years of like they will, they will go into renal failure. Okay. So what we do by the way, like remember like to check your kidney function test, the best test is to keep on checking their creatinine. Okay. Or renal function test. So we keep on checking their creatinine as well as uh, albumin to creatinine ratio ACR in this one way we check like either there is albumin coming in the urine or not because when the albumin started appearing in the urine what it means like there is albumin urea like the kidneys they cannot control the leakage of proteins or the kidneys is damaged so the treatment is will stay same especially just one more thing I, I will add over here uh, like any patients who have uh, what you can say uh, who have diabetes and they have hypertension the best drug to control their hypertension is ACE inhibitors because they're good for this uh, albumin urea they're good for that um, one more thing is called as diabetic uh, neuropathy okay neuropathy so what is this diabetic neuropathy you know simply uh, all the nerve all, all the nerves which are supplying our body they get their blood supply through very small small vessels okay uh, and of course like the nerves are those which are supplying sensations to us and the motor activity to us 
and also the autonomic function. So, uh, of course, like the, the exact, 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 uh, you can say, uh, mechanism is not known, but uh, what is believed is like uh, when the, the glucose level is more, so there is a lot of osmotic toxicity. Uh, there is increased formation of sorbitol and things like this and that's why you know it damages what you can say uh, this, this, this one, the nerves okay so and to, to check this thing by the way I was talking about this monofilament test okay we, we do monofilament test or we can take a tuning fork and we can see like either the patient can feel the vibration in their limbs or not mostly in the lower limbs because lower limbs are the one which are uh, affected first so when the nerves are damaged so, so what will what would what will happen your nerves are those which are supplying us the sensations of touch of temperature of vibration of uh, all this thing so uh, diabetic patients you know they, they they complain of tingling sensations uh, burning sensations okay uh, in the feet especially or itching sensations in the feet okay uh, that is like the sensory part okay um, the motor part is not much damaged. Mostly, you know, it is a sensory part which is damaged. So, any any diabetic patient who is completing this thing always think about peripheral neuropathy. Okay, uh, that's a very important part. Part and once you know the autonomic nerves are also involved. So, uh, these are the pe people who have hypotensions. Okay, sometimes they go into tachycardia as well. Okay, because like their their nerves are damaged. Uh, and like chronically erectile dysfunction erectile dysfunction can occur uh, many other things can occur guys as well okay uh, in males erect erect erectile dysfunction is very important gastroparesis can, can occur uh, like what is gastroparesis uh, of course like the uh, movement of uh, the GRD is controlled by your autonomic nerves and when the autonomic nerves are damaged so the gut motility is not so good so this thing can occur as well so simply uh, uh, like just to check these things you know we keep on doing screening of the diabetic patients and uh, what we do we take a monofilament or we take a tuning fork and we keep on checking the sensation in the feet especially just to check like if anyone uh, sensations have any problem so we must deal it as soon as possible uh, we so what what can be done for these people anyone who's who don't have sensation in the feet their feet can get damaged okay they can get like small uh, tra trauma wounds which can lead to infection which can lead to formation of gangrene okay so again tight glycemic control if someone have too much pain of course it's nerve pain so we can give them uh, the drugs which are used to control the neuropathic pains like uh, gabapentin or pregabalin or carbamazepine uh, we we send them to podiatrists who take care of their feet and we they they educate them wash your feet every day wash like wear good socks okay wear the uh, what you can say good fitting shoes okay uh, things like this so uh, that's of course like how we deal with uh, with them uh, the last part of the lecture uh, related to diabetes is uh, um, other complications other complications which diabetic people may have okay so uh, in other complications you know uh, diabetic people guys they they, they get too much uh, they, they get recurrent infections okay recurrent infections generally in the females you know they have too many vaginal infections and uh, there are some few things which are very rare for example uh, okay one very important thing is cataracts you know cataracts so what happened like uh, due to increased glucose level for a long period of time uh, what happens uh, the, the the lens okay they become opaque because the cataract develops secondary to you can say the lens become glycosylated the lens proteins become glycosylated like they combine with pro with glucose and they become glycosylated and all of course like increased level of sorbitol also 
change uh, the you can say the water they create fibrosis so cataract is very important they get recurrent infections okay and uh, uh, there is few of the things not so important not so common but uh, one thing is called as necrobiosis uh, lip, uh, <laughs> lipoid lipoidica diabeticorum diabeticorum it's a very rare complication and uh, the, the the skin over the shin you know the lower limb shin become thin and what you can see you can see the vessels on that you can see a picture on google uh, this thing is one of the thing and yes of course like one one very uh, important comp complication i remember you know uh, due to decreased sensation for a long period of time you know uh, the joints of the lower limb they can be deformed and called as charcot joints uh, they can occur as well okay frozen shoulder again like diabetic people they like the, their shoulder may have problem and you know their shoulder become freeze uh, you can say you cannot move uh, the, the medical term of this thing is called as adhesive um, capsulitis okay so I think that's uh, pretty much about uh, diabetes. You can see this diagram. It's a very nice, you can say, photograph. These are the clinical features written. Assessment, clinical features, type 1, type 2. Then see, this one is like the diagnosis. Okay, classification, gestational, type 1, type 2, mature onset. And this one is like the complications hypoglycemia lipodystrophy oh yes lipodystrophy is also one of the thing you know uh, basically it is called as diabetic dermopathy and uh, but not so important so that's fine and uh, treatment insulin hypoglycemic diet okay and all this one when you exercise of course your glucose your insulin need will be decreased this is all the things which i was discussing just now so anyhow thank you guys if you have any question you can ask me and i will answer you that bye